I uh, wanted to show you a little bit about the AT Tiny 402. It is a tiny little microprocessor, and I'll uh, quickly uh, cut you down here and show you what this thing looks like. Okay, here you are looking at the AT Tiny 402. On the left, you can see the little chip sitting on a dime just for size comparison. And on the right, you can see the unit that I'm playing around with. I've mounted it onto a little carrier, a little eight pin carrier that I can plug into a proto board so that I can uh, uh, do some testing with it. Here are two test uh, pieces of equipment. The AT Tiny 402 is programmed with a new capability called UDPI. And this is a homemade UDPI programmer. I'll put some links below to uh, videos that show how to manufacture this. But it's simply uh, an Arduino Nano uh, with a capacitor added across the reset line. Uh, underneath, there's a resistor that goes to the programming line and a power and ground line. So a single single wire programming capability. And over here is a standard serial to USB converter. These are a dime a dozen and they're all over the place. People use them for uh, programming Arduinos, uh, downloading boot codes, stuff like that. So. So they're readily available. I did not build that or, you know, it's it's just used. But the AT Tiny, let me bring that back in frame here. So this AT Tiny does have a UART built into it so you can use serial input output with it. And so taking that transmit and receive out Hooking it up to this lets you put it into the USB and lets you read this with the Arduino IDE. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. So as you can see, it's an itty bitty little processor. It's only got eight pins, so obviously you're not going to get a lot of I.O. capability out of this. But this thing has a surprisingly capable uh, architecture and can do an awful lot. Now, what it does not have is a lot of storage capability. So if you look at this, it has either 2 or 4K of flash. So the 402 has 4K, the 202 has 2K of flash. It has 256 or 128 bytes of memory, RAM. Bytes of RAM, not kilobytes or megabytes, bytes of RAM. It has 64 or 128 bytes of EEPROM, which is kind of handy. I mean, if you want to store something without power, you do have an EEPROM with a little bit of storage capability that you can use. So uh, if you look down at this thing, it'll run at 20 megahertz without an external crystal, uh, which is really neat, and also a lot of other speeds, too. It has a couple of external hardware interrupts capable if you need to use that. I've already talked about the, the memory it has. It has low power capability. I haven't played around with that, so I'm not really sure what all that does. But I wanted to take you uh, down to the pin layouts. So before I get to the actual pin layouts, uh, let me stop here at uh, the capabilities. So we're looking at the AT Tiny 402. Uh, so it has 128 bytes of EEPROM. It'll run at 20 megahertz. It has a 16-bit counter A, B, uh, and a 12-bit counter. It does not have a 12-bit counter, sorry. Uh, it has a UART. It does support SPI. It does support I squared C. It does have uh, ADC capability uh, on uh, six of its pins. It does not have a DAC. Um, I'm not sure what AC stands for. I think analog comparator, if I'm not mistaken. It does have an analog comparator. 
It, do, it does not have touch control. And a few of these other things, I'm not sure what it's uh, talking about. But anyway, so for such a tiny little chip, it's, it's capable. Here's the basic pinout of this thing. Uh, you have a VDD uh, 5 volts on pin 1, ground on pin 8, and on pin 6 you've got reset, which is also UPDI. And you can set it up so that it's also an I.O. pin. If you can steer away from that, I, I would suggest it personally, but you know they do make programmers that use a high voltage programming that will allow you to program this and still use that as an I.O. pin. Uh, if you look at their little color coding thing here, GPIO is uh, blue in the corner. And uh, what they're saying here, a power domain, if you put a 3.3 volt on here to run on 3.3 volts, then those will be 3.3 output pins. If you put a uh, 5 volt on here, they'll be 5 volt pins. And then if you look down in the analog functions, the green indicators indicate the analog functions. So you can use this as analog inputs, and a couple of those are comparators. But there's a table a little bit farther down here uh, that shows uh, uh, what the capabilities of each of these pins are. And some of the things to point out is like pins 2 and 3 uh, are the receive and transmit pins. And if you want to use I squared C, uh, those are on pins 4 and 5. And so anyway, the data sheet pretty much tells you everything you need to know. So with the limited amount of memory, I wanted to see how could you really use the I.O. function or, or does the Arduino IDE eat up too much space uh, when you're using I.O.? So I figured I would start by doing a quick Hello World sketch, and that's it, and see how much of the resources of this uh, chip is used up doing just a Hello World. So let me bring that sketch up. So you can see here I have my UPDI programmer hooked up uh, to the little chip there. Uh, the red is power on pin 1. The black is ground on pin 8, and the green is the UPDI programmer on pin 6. Now, unfortunately, the cable I have that fits uh, the Arduino Nano is only about 6 inches long, so I'm going to have to put this thing down almost near the floor to plug it into my computer. So I'm not going to show you that, but trust me, I'm plugging this in. Okay, here is my simple little Hello World sketch. So in setup, I have a begin statement and a small delay, well, a five second delay. And then uh, I just do a serial print line Hello World and another five second delay. That's it. Uh, if you look at the setups here, uh, well, I'll check my port first, COM8, so that looks correct. I'm set up as the AT Tiny, and I'll uh, put a link in how you configure the Arduino IDE to, for this also. Um, so I've uh, selected the AT Tiny 402 with a 20 megahertz clock. I'm not sure what the rest of this stuff does because uh, I haven't played around with that, um, but. I'm using this uh, JTAG to UPDI um, programmer, and that's it. So I'll go ahead and program this. I think it's in fairly verbose mode, so it should put out quite a bit of information. You can see it's talking to the chips, and it is done. Now, let me pull this up here and rotate back to where it gives the specs for the memory utilization. 
So, this Hello World sketch took 45% of the available program space, and it used up 63 bytes of memory, uh, so that's a quarter of the RAM that's available has been used up. So, as you can see, that works, but there's a... Uh, you're not going to do a very complex program if you want to use the serial I.O. with it. But just to prove that this actually works, let me hook up my serial um, to a USB adapter uh, and turn this thing back on and we'll see if, if it's working correctly. Okay, I have hooked up my USB to serial converter uh, to the chip. It's uh, kind of hard to see here, um, but the green wire is ground, the red wire is VCC, and the orange and yellow wires are transmit and receive, uh, and those go over, probably too close, it's probably not in focus, uh, so those go over to the uh, converter, which then goes to my teeny tiny USB cable. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the computer and we'll take a look at it. Okay, I have uh, plugged my adapter into the USB port. Uh, so it should be uh, sending data into the serial port right now. Uh, let me uh, check the, uh, the port number, uh, port COM7 now. So um, I have that configured for COM7. I will turn on the, the serial monitor. And uh, as you can see, it is outputting Hello World. Uh, it should repeat that every five seconds. So, yep, it does. And uh, so uh, we have our Hello World uh, test program that eats up 50% of the memory capability of the chip but at least it's capable of doing it. So I have a project in mind where I want to be able to get some, some data out of it. And uh, I, uh, I may use this serial input. I might also look at using the EEPROM. I played around with that a little bit earlier and the EEPROM overhead is a lot less than the serial overhead. So if I can't squeeze my program and the serial I.O. into the same capability, I may take the I may turn on the EEPROM capability and write the data that I want to track to the EEPROM and then load up another program that reads out the EEPROM and dumps it out serially. So there are ways to work around the limitations of this. Uh, in the end result of this, uh, the program that I want to run eats up about 50% of the memory right now, uh, but it's a little dicey in how it works. So and there may be other changes that may eat up more of the memory. So I just need to make sure that I can squeeze this all in. Uh, there is also a, a UPDI debugging capability that's part of pin one and that single line serial capability. But I don't know how to use it. I haven't found any information on how to set up your own UPDI debug capability. I'm still looking for that. So if anybody knows how to do that, leave a comment. Uh, thanks a lot. You guys have a great day.